Hello. And I'm Cindy Tall. And we're in And we're here. We traveled all the way from Prince Albert to Saskatchewan to introduce the perfect solution to the 2017 arbitration case called in the Dining Center. So, so uh, our agenda for today is uh, we're going to talk about overview of the, the company. We're going to analyze the problem. Uh, we're going to see what is the comp competitions out there and the alternative to their problems. And we're going to give you guys information. So, the, this case competition is about this uh, orchestra, the Regina Symphony Orchestra, and they're actually the longest uh, forming orchestra in Canada. So, they're in form in Regina, and their average customer is between 55 to 80 years old. And they actually have a very dedicated fan base and very loyal customers. But uh, although their uh, average uh, customer may be pretty old, their new first time customers are between 20 and 30 years old. And they're also looking into discovering what the, is, is all about. Okay, so there's many problems within the art, so there's, the first thing is that within three years, the leader, Tracy, has to get rid of a $350,000, or $300,000 deficit. And the problem with that is symphonies all across Canada are in tough financial situations. This makes it very tough, tough because the sales are declining, the sale tickets are declining, the costs of everything are rising, and the patrons are aging. So with the patrons aging, they need to inspire a new generation to love classical music performed by the orchestra. Um, the expenses over from the revenue, this is another problem by $250,000. $250, $250, $250, they need to hire a new music director, and the businesses are cutting back on the spending due to the drop of oil prices all over Regina and surrounding area. And the competition in this industry is very competitive. Throughout the decades, many streaming uh, websites like Netflix have come around, have come around and decreased the sales and tickets to all these live events by quite a bit because they can just stay home and just watch online. Other competition includes the movie theater, sports, and other content performed by, performed by famous celebrities. So, uh, for the outside of this year, they actually have a new leader. Her name is Tracy uh, Davis. She's fully capable of uh, running the business. She has a lot of experience in the music industry, which, which has accomplished a uh, pianist degree. Where, uh, she had a very really strong um, past experience as chef school and uh, the director of education and outreach in the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra. And that she had um, teach herself to be a self-education in many non-profit organizations. So we have three alternatives uh, to their problems that the, this uh, orchestra is facing. The first one is expand the variety of the music we play. The second one is start band camps to get the new generation involved. And finally, the third one is to increase the number of shows they do per year and uh, to remove <coughs> the subscriptions packages they offer and to increase uh, aggressively their marketing campaign. Okay, so starting from the first alternative is in to expand the includes of around music. We would do this by, instead of just having an orchestra performance, we would also add an opera singer in there just to make it a bit more interesting to all ages. Um, we would broadcast on the radio every day from 7.30 to 8 p.m. And because that's why a lot of people just need to unwind in the day, they just finish a day of work, they can just sit back and relax, the extra music. Um, and we would also partner with restaurants so our music could be played in different restaurants in different times in the day. And the last pro is we would offer piano lessons, and since we already offer violin lessons, we would just expand into the piano as Tracy Davis is an accomplished pianist and she knows all about that stuff. The cons of this alternative, and one of them is because we're changing a lot of things, the change in our reputation and our company is pretty excessive. So we might lose a few customers of buying tickets because they don't like what we're doing. Well, so for the second alternative, we thought that the uh, when the inside of the orchestra was good enough, we need to expand it more. 
which uh, right now they have quite a few programs that is uh, really good, like uh, uh, Symphony Under the Sky, which is like an hour away from Me China. But we thought more than that. Why not just put it in Me China at West Canada Park? It's like five minutes of walking from the from the original, like from the RSL. And we would uh, have uh, do like a band house there with like all the fundraisings, get the kids, get uh, all the people with different demographics to be involved in, and do fundraising with the sales ticket of uh, uh, the banks, which uh, and which will expand our uh, our our campaign to more new customers that never heard of orchestra before. So our pilot uh, alternative is to. Uh, Eliminate all the subscription packages they offer and just start selling uh, concert or concert. And also increase the 39 week season to a 52 week season. And that plan will last for one year. And then uh, this would increase dramatically their revenue and their profits. And they'd offer more concerts, they have more presence in the community, and the deficit would be paid a lot faster. However, the uh, 52 uh, week season is pretty long, uh, might get tiring, and of course, uh, with uh, uh, they would, they would, with that comes a lot more expenses. Uh, we need a more aggressive marketing campaign in order to keep the average uh, attendance at the concerts. Okay, so why we chose alternative three? Um, because the deficit had to be paid within three years, we said, why not just pay it in one year and shift our focus to other things in those following two years, just for extra time. And because the faster we can get the deficit paid, the better. And the reason, or one of the ways we're going to get that money is by eliminating the su subscription packages and just selling tickets for each, uh, for each concert. This satisfies the customer's needs because what they said is they didn't want the big packages for these subscriptions, they just want a small package. So we're just eliminating them completely and they can go to whatever concert they want because that's what they're paying for and they have the overall choice. So um, we'd see uh, with, there's 13 more concerts, so of course it, we're gonna have more revenue. Uh, our attendance rates are gonna be pretty much the same because we'll have a more aggressive marketing campaign and uh, so we have a total revenue of $4,200,000 and uh, the contributed revenue and the grants would stay approximately the same, they won't grow that much. And the, the revenues will be just slightly uh, bigger, of course more concerts means uh, more expenses. Uh, it costs approximately $42,000 per concert and we uh, would spend Four thousand extra dollars uh, for marketing for each concert, so that uh, that increases this, our spending uh, marketing, which uh, increases increases it to from just over three hundred thousand dollars to five hundred forty thousand dollars. The other expenses would stay pretty much the same: administration and in kind expenses, and our total expenses would be three point two million dollars. So our total profit of the year would be nine hundred seventy six million thousand dollars. And after the deficit, deficit is paid, it'd be around $626,000. So if we choose this plan, our deficit would be paid in one year. And after that, we can focus on our other two, uh, on future plans, such as, you know, what the other alternatives uh, were, like uh, bad camps and uh, so on. So, how Tracy can implement this plan? Uh, first of all, we have to change the number of yearly shows. That means more organization, uh, more pre preparation. Uh, she has to eliminate all the subscription packages. She, uh, she has to start selling uh, tickets concert for concert uh, because that's what the, the, the customers want. They don't want expensive packages. They want to just want to buy concert, uh, uh, tickets concert for concerts. And yeah. Any questions for us? So there's a big thrust of this recommendation that by removing the packages, people have the opportunity to cherry pick. You want to get that many more people who buy tickets that it will generate revenue. Is that the thesis? 
So yes, we think that with removing the subscription packages, if I say I would go and buy a subscription package for an eight show, eight shows consecutively, I would kind of want to go to every single show because that's what I paid for. And what if I end up like, what if I'm busy one night and I don't really have the time to go? I'm kind of I just kind of lost money. So by removing those packages, I can just pay for the shows that I can and I want to go to without being stuck with that subscription. In terms of the risk of that, um, what I'm concerned with is that uh, with some of the packages, because the, the price per concert is reduced, um, you end up getting one, one or two tickets free, right? So from um, an organization perspective, I'm really concerned that if we don't have any revenue that we know of in advance, um, that we're necessarily going to be able to, um, that there's just a lot of risk associated with every show because you don't, you don't have all those people who pre-bought tickets for the whole season, right? And so that's, that's kind of concerning to me um, because you can already buy single tickets. So what's the difference? Because are the ticket prices going to change then? Yeah, so uh, the ticket prices for a pure concert is $40 for no matter what concert. So that's kind of different from all the subscription package differ. Uh, some are $50, some are $45, some are $60. So this just changes the rates to one simple uh, price, $40. Whether you're a student or not? Yeah. Okay, so $40 spot for anyone, for any concert, any time. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just may have missed it. Was there um, a direction to, towards marketing at all? Yeah, so, was, so there's an increase of $4,000 per concert in marketing. So we market at radio stations, uh, newspapers, you know, uh, signs, bus and, uh, on buses, and so on. It would be a pretty aggressive marketing. And was the focus mostly on the older demographic, or were you wanting? Yeah, we're trying to exploit more of the older demographic because we really uh, the priority with that alternative is really paying off the paying off the deficit. So we, as much as possible, uh, generate our revenue from the from our uh, existing customers. And then after it's paid off, then we start expanding into the newer generation and the younger generation. And so on. And that's why for the later year, we were taking up uh, expanding and partnership with Mosaic and Sentiment community. And by performing, put our symphony orchestra, like performing for Canada there with the broadcasting and the audience um, at the radio games, we're going to uh, catch a lot of attention, especially, and increase more our demographic, like from, um, from parents to like older kids. So here's a question that I pitched to the prior group. What kind of a concert would they have to put on for you three to want to go to the symphony concert? I would say, what would the experience have to be? What would it look like? I would say, I've been to like, two orchestras. One of them was like, I was like six, so I didn't know what was going on. The next one, they did more of a movie theme, where they did famous, like, songs from Star Wars or Indiana Jones or Superman or all those and I really enjoyed that because that's what I grew up with, right? So I think something like that or even taking modern music and putting a switch on it and making it into an orchestra piece could be really effective to lure in those younger, that younger audience. It doesn't have to be the entire show, it just be like a, the beginning of the show we put this and then or the middle of the show to could be just the orchestra and then for the end can be like we would invite like an opera singer to go on stage and actually mix with the uh, mix with the band and would call the attention of people to come to the show. What are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I think if uh, you mixed a bit of the classical with uh, modern topics, like uh, all the you know, for example, if we take a big box office, a lot of box office hit. And we they play the the soundtrack of that movie. I think that's really interesting.
So to do something like that, and it was kind of implied in the case that the purists are kind of turned off by it. You know, the younger crowd, that's what you like. Uh, how would you manage that tension between the purists and really what the larger audience is like? <coughs> um, since most of our customers are uh, the, the, as you described, purists, uh, most of our uh, services or concerts, most of their services and concerts would be uh, designed, designed for that. But every once in a while, it, we do something to attract the younger generation, just to grab their attention. So, so as, as Rob said earlier, we have a like, symphony under the sky. Like, why not put a symphony in the sky? So. Time. Thank <laughs> you.